东西。Members, it is、uh, time to make a start.、Um, we have a technical one. I now call the meeting to order. Confirmation of minutes of the last meeting. I take it the members have received the minutes, and the secretary has not received any proposed amendments. Unless you have any、uh, proposal, I can I take the minutes as confirmed. All right, moving on to the、um, information papers issued since the last meeting, we have、um, seven information papers. All of them are set out、um, in the agenda. Any questions there, Mr. Tenkapio? President, uh, some of them have to do with us, and this is uh, basically a reflection of public sentiments, given the、um, declining、uh, oil prices.、Um, there, there is、uh, an impact on, on the、um, domestic feel, and perhaps、um, the、um, prices、um, should be adjusted in line with、um, the、um, overall、uh, oil prices. Some、um, the drivers and the、uh, domestic、uh, households and so on. Perhaps we can have some discussions.、Uh, yes, we we did have a word with、um, the bureau, and in April, in fact,、uh, we're going to be、um, having a agenda item、uh, on this one. Okay then. Items for discussion at the next meeting. And the next meeting is scheduled for the 16th of February、um, at 10:45 a.m. Let me put this to members. There are two items proposed by the administration. Number one, Hong Kong Tourism Board work plan for 2015-16. And number two, update on the Hong Kong Disneyland. Agreeable. All right, agreeable. Mr. Tenkapio's、uh, issue will be taken at the panel meeting in April. All right. Briefing by the Secretary for Transport and Housing on relevant policy initiatives in the Chief Executive's 2015 policy. Yes, we invite the relevant officials in, please. I gather that、um, you have the list of officials attending today's meeting, so I won't bore you with、um, the details there. I'm not sure whether they are still at the housing panel. 欢迎局长。Like to welcome、um, secretary and your team to this meeting. Secretary, I take it that、um, you're going to be、uh, highlighting、uh, some of the salient points in the policy address. But perhaps I、uh, let you have the floor.、Uh, I'll spend、uh, eight or nine minutes. Chairman, in 2015, we will promote Hong Kong as、um, an international maritime and aviation centre. We will、um, take forward the hardware and software construction. In terms of、um, port, in December last year, we have、um, announced um, the、uh, feasibility study on CT10, and also um, the um, Hong Kong planning 2030. CT10 is technically feasible, but given the colossal investment and given the、um, container throughput, it is、uh, not、uh, cost-effective to、uh, build it. But the consultant is of the view that if、uh, we can take improvement measures to improve、um, the handling capacity of the container terminal, we will be able to cope with、um, the 1. Five、uh, percent、uh, increase in container throughput up to 2030. We appreciate that、um, there is more、uh, need. There is a need for more land、um, and berths at the container terminal, and we need to、um, handle 23 million、uh, 
um, T use uh, throughput uh, per year. We need to uh, use the land backup land area in the uh, vicinity to alleviate um, the congestion. Starting from last year, we have uh, reviewed um, the um, STT and the Equation Terminal in order to uh, consolidate the um, port uh, backup area to enhance the operating efficiency to maintain uh, our port um, as um, a, a hub. We will be announcing all the uh, specific measures and consult, um, consulting the, uh, the relevant sectors to enhance uh, Hong Kong as an international uh, maritime aviation center. We have to um, move up um, the value chain. Uh, we have to do more in the way of uh, ship management, broking, chartering, finance, marine insurance, and marine law and arbitration to enhance or consolidate our position there. We will be uh, enhancing manpower training and promotion to um, open up more business opportunities and bring in the more um, businesses into Hong Kong and uh, for and to use it as a platform um, for the brain to go global and to build up a critical mass. Last year, we, in terms of uh, the new organizations, we have commissioned um, a uh, consultant uh, to look at the function uh, and the organization of the new maritime body to decide on the feasibilities in terms of operation and financial feasibility. We will be completing uh, the, the details um, in the near future. We have uh, set up um, the Maritime and Aviation Training Fund um, to attract new blood uh, and to enhance um, the on-the-job um, training. Um, this uh, will enable us to build up a critical mass of talents. The Civil Aviation Department uh, is also looking a commission to consult and to look into um, the feasibility of a Civil Aviation Training Institute. Uh, Hong Shui Kyu, um, New development area, 60 hectares of land that will be set aside for logistics and other developments. As regards to Wooden West, 10, 10 hectares of land will be set aside for logistics. Uh, the uh, transport feasibility study will be completed in the coming one or two months. We will be consulting the district councils and seek permission from the um, uh, TPB, and we should be able to uh, launch the land. Um, some of the land in, in the, within this area. We will identify further logistics uh, land, and the Logistics uh, Council will be um, working with the trade to promote um, uh, e-logistics and um, manpower training to enhance um, the competitiveness. Chairman, um, the Hong Kong International Airport is, most, is the busiest uh, passenger and freight uh, airport. It is also a driver of our economy in terms of freight and passenger volumes and the um, and the um, flight uh, volumes we have um, registered a um, record high. In the coming year, the airport authority will be um, enhancing the facilities and the volumes of um, the airport to cope with the ever increasing demand. This year, um, the, um, we will um, build um, a passenger lounge, and 20 berths uh, will be built. In the West Apron, uh, there will be more berths um, to, be, to become available. The, the number will stand at 180. The Civil Avi Aviation Department uh, will be replacing um, the um, ATC uh, system. I understand members are concerned about the delays there. I have instructed the um, Commissioner to uh, make sure um, that to seize um, the opportunity while make sh making sure that everything is going to be safe and deal with uh, all the issues that um, have to be dealt with. Uh, the um, CAD is um, arranging for um, training for the staff, and this ATC uh, will be uh, commissioned um, in the first half of uh, next year. The third runway is um, progressing smoothly. Um, the um, EIA uh, will be uh, undertaken. All the details regarding the design, it has been completed. Last month, um, the government had received the recommendations from the airport authority regarding um, the third runway, and we are considering the, the details. Under the uh, third runway system, up to uh, 2030, um, the handling capacity can increase uh, from 30 million and 4.4 million. Uh, tons to uh, 100 million to 8.9 uh, tons uh, respectively. As regards um, whether the third runway 
uh, will co cause um, excessive congestion in the Pearl River Delta. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to take this opportunity to say, to say something. Um, the uh, Civil Aviation uh, Bureau uh, of uh, the mainland, Macau and Hong Kong, have um, put together um, the uh, implementation plan uh, regarding um, the airspace. We do have for uh, the short-term, medium and long-term measures to optimize um, the airspace structure and um, traffic management in the Pearl River Delta. Now, in the PRD, the, um, the air traffic, aviation traffic is getting more and more heavy. Um, in Hong Kong, Shenzhen and Guangzhou, they are developing and um, increasing the volumes of uh, flight. We have to have coordination in order to standardize the planning, um, in order to uh, optimize um, the airspace to achieve a win-win situation. In 2007, um, we um, adopted um, the ICAO safety standard as the uh, yardstick. We assumed that um, uh, Hong Kong Shenzhen airports uh, will be uh, having uh, three one-ways and there shouldn't be any conflict. All the optimization measures have been completed. We are liaising with uh, the mainland authorities and core um, tripartite meetings uh, to put in place all the optimization measures and deal with all the relevant issues. Chairman, the development of aviation and um, freight uh, movement will be critical in enhancing Hong Kong's competitiveness. Together with the trade, we will be taking these um, forward. Thank you. Thanks very much, Secretary. Now, I throw the floor quest, uh, uh, for open for questions. I won't call Heng, Dennis Kwok, Ken Kapil, Ken Sleung, Frankie Yik, Fernando Chung, Yu Si Wing, Ben Chen, and Xin Chong Kai. Any other members? Now, we will end this session or this part of the meeting at um, 5.24 minutes each, please. Mr. Wong Kwok Heng. Chairman, thank you. Chairman, my uh, questions are offer around the uh, third runway, and the members of the public are very concerned about this. There are different voices um, that suggest that we don't need um, the third runway. And there are certain issues that uh, remain outstanding, and we can um, just um, make or take improvement measures and that, that uh, can obviate the need uh, for a third runway. Now, there are some uh, suggestions that um, we can upgrade uh, or increase um, the passenger volumes of um, the existing flies, and that would uh, enable us to um, obviate the need for the third runway. Second, there are other suggestions. And in fact, um, today there are some ads um, that are run in the newspapers that um, suggest that if uh, the mainland doesn't open up um, the airspace, then uh, even with uh, the third runway in Hong Kong, we're not, going to, we're not going to be achieving anything at all. So the overriding condition is uh, for the mainland to open up the airspace uh, before we decide on the third runway. And how does um, the Secretary react to this? My third question, there is um, another suggestion that um, we can all we need to do is to cooperate with uh, Shenzhen Airport. We can take full advantage of uh, the airports in the, in the vicinity. Uh, without having to build the third runway. Secretary, first of all, with regard to the Hong Kong International Airport and its traffic, if big aircraft are used instead of smaller aircrafts, well, then actually there are more um, big aircraft using the Hong Kong Airport instead of small aircraft. For example, when it's compared with the Singapore airport. All along, the mainland Macau and Hong Kong have known that the uh, traffic in the Pearl River Delta airspace is very busy. So that's why in 2004, the Civil Aviation Administration of China and the Civil Aviation Authority of Macau, as well as the Civil Aviation Department of Hong Kong, has set up a tripartite uh, party so as to look at the uh, optimization. Um, of the use of the uh, peripheral delta airspace. This includes uh, Bai Yuan Airport, Bao An Airport, etc. In 2007, we agreed on a consolidated plan. All these developments and objectives have been taken into account. And we have also looked at long, medium, and short term uh, improvement in order to solve the 
BCS space problem. Well, of course, we have to implement measures so as to make the best use of the airspace mentioned. And uh, is no conflict among the different areas. We are all trying our best to optimize the use of the airspace. People have been asking if it is possible for the Hong Kong IA and the Shenzhen Airport to work together. And actually, it is not a very simple issue uh, for planes flying from the mainland to Hong Kong and for planes to be taking off from um, the Hong Kong airport. Uh, we have to negotiate rights with other airports. We can't just say that a plane is destined to arrive in Hong Kong and suddenly it decides to um, land uh, in the mainland airport. And China has its own flying rights arrangements. And also for a country, there are also different airports. And if a plane has to land in the airport of another city, um, special arrangements has to be made as well. So we have to look at this issue uh, from a comprehensive angle. Uh, Mr. Kwok, well, I would also like to ask about um, aviation development. In the paper, it is stated that in order to enhance the capacity of our airport uh, facilities would have to be improved. I do not query this. However, for the construction of a hardware, I think um, you have to improve the software as well. For example, the um, discount flights, for example, jets, discount um, uh, airlines, for example, Jetstar. Um, Many of these companies are trying to apply for a license, but you have been dragging your feet. And you are saying that now you have to spend thousands of billions of dollars on building uh, hardware. Yes, we want Hong Kong people to have more choices. We want more airlines to serve Hong Kong people. This can also create jobs. I don't know if you have already approved um, those applications. I want to know the latest progress. Secretary. Chairman, I would like to clarify a point. The SAL government has its policy on um, discount airlines. We encourage competition in the aviation industry. We encourage uh, wider choices for people. We have never said that we um, would not allow discount airlines to operate in Hong Kong. Actually, many um, discount airlines are now um, using the Hong Kong airport. So we adopt an open attitude towards this issue. Just now, Mr. Kwok asked about Jetstar. And it is not just about a discount airline. Now, this is indeed a discount airline. And it wants to set up its office in Hong Kong. It wants to use the uh, flying right of Hong Kong. Now, this has caused a problem. As it is um, stipulated in the basic law that this company has to uh, use Hong Kong as its major operating base before it can do that. As for Jetstar, it said that it uh, would have the interest to set up its main office in Hong Kong. The SAL government has told – well, actually, this happened in 2012. The SAL government said that at that time it was uh, reviewing the aviation policy in Hong Kong. That is, under what circumstances would an airline be allowed to operate in Hong Kong in this way? Last year, we made an announcement concerning the new policy and standards. And this applies to all the airlines if they want to use Hong Kong as their base. This is also applicable to the airlines that are already using Hong Kong as their base. Now, the SALG has already told Jetstar this, and Jetstar has officially filed an application. This happened in the last half, um, in the second half of last year. And also is applying for a license. Uh, from the Hong Kong government. I understand that some other airlines are raising their objections and a public hearing will be held. So why do they object to this? Well, some ask whether the um, Jet Air 
is a company that's independent uh, from other overseas companies. I cannot um, divulge the details right now. I'm not worried about this particular uh, company. However, I'm worried that some local airlines are raising objections because they want to avoid competition. And I'm very concerned about the progress. Now, because um, we will be conducting a hearing, so I don't think I should comment on this. However, we adopt a policy which encourages competition. Mr. Tangapio, I also have a question concerning the third runway. Now, if you are going to make the, a major decision concerning the third runway this year, I'm sure it will be a huge infrastructural project. Many organizations and professionals have queried your uh, ceiling on flight movements. Now, for the aircraft parking stands, if you are indeed going to increase um, the number of it, and if you are indeed going to have a new air traffic control center soon, then what will be the maximum flight movements? Is it 68 or is over 80? Can you give us a clear figure so then we can make a decision? And Secretary, According to what you said just now, you said that in 2007 there was already a tripartite airspace plan and it's implemented step by step. So how about the air war that people have been talking about? Is it not a problem? So you, if you just standardize all the procedures and planning, then there will be no question of air war or it indeed exists, and there are still problems to be resolved. And also, in your statement just now, you said that the airport authority has already put together detailed design and fiscal studies. So what will be the financial arrangements be like? Will the government foot the whole bill, or will bonds be issued? How much money will be spent? Secretary, Mr. Tang has raised a number of questions, and they are very important questions. Um, I hope you can give me more time. I can just give you four minutes. Uh, with regard to financing, the government is uh, looking into the uh, proposal that's put forward by the AA. I'm not um, going to uh, give you the details right now. As for the number of aircraft parking stands and the new ATC system, they do not decide our final volume. Well, of course, if we have a new ATC system, it would be better for our traffic air control. It would be safer and more efficient. As for the aircraft parking stands, it has uh, nothing to do with the traffic. So eventually, it's hinged on the um, runways and the frequency of the flight movements. Now, um, the uh, gap between two flight movements is about a minute or so. In 2008, we invited the British um, NATS to help us conduct a comprehensive survey. And uh, in that report, they said that the maximum flight a minute was 68. So that's why we now think uh, 68 would be the ceiling. So in the past few years, has this um, level been exceeded? No, we have not reached 68 yet. We are now using 65 or 66 as the standard, but very soon we will be reaching 68. So if we do not have a third uh, runway, the handling capacity will be limited. And in 2007, we uh, formulated a sol consolidated plan with the mainland. We have taken the third runway into account when we drew this up. And uh, the Guangzhou Baiyun Air Airport will be having five uh, runways, and our cities, other cities in the neighborhood will also be having several runways. So we want to have a standardized uh, plan so that we can improve um, in a more harmonious way. I would also like to 
asked about aviation development. I support that the government promotes the development of aviation industry. I have two questions. Now, we know that the PAC is looking at the new ATC system. I'm a member of the PAC, and I cannot tell you the progress right now. However, Secretary, I would like to put this down in record. When I look at the ATC system, I think it is something very important because it's not only about Hong Kong being an aviation center, it's also about Hong Kong status as an international financial center. I think I even think the ATC system is more important than our um, constitutional um, development because it's a matter of it's a matter of life or death. As for the development of the aviation industry, I would like to ask some questions. Not long ago, the Economic Development Commission said that we can use the um, Civil Aviation Institute in Singapore as a blueprint because Hong Kong is planning. Uh, a similar institute. So when I look at the Civil Aviation Institute in Singapore, it's set up in 1958. It has a bachelor programs and uh, master programs. So it's similar to other tertiary institutions. So I would like to ask the administration, now you are planning for such an institution. In Hong Kong, what's its positioning? Is it a vocational training? Um, institute or is it is it a tertiary institute other than the training of pilots? I think our airports also need other backup staff. So for this civil aviation training institute, we will also be training pilots, engineers, as well as other land service staff. Yes, I or ground surface staff. Yes, I agreed with Mr. Lang that um, the ATS system is very important because it will have a major impact on the safety and efficiency of our airport. Now we are uh, changing the ATC system. Yes, indeed, there is a delay for the government. Safety is the most important thing. Now we are thinking about establishing a, a civil aviation training institute. A consultant is looking at it now and is also looking at its positioning. It will also look at the training institutes in our neighborhood. For example, the training the aviation training academy in Singapore. As for the civil aviation academy in Singapore, it has um been established for decades, so um, there has been a lot of uh, evolvements. Hong Kong is a major aviation hub, so we think we should um, develop on all fronts. Civil aviation training is something also very important. As for the training of pilots, some Hong Kong airlines are training their pilots. So uh, we will also be uh, looking into this, that is, as to whether the Civil Aviation Training Institute will provide this kind of training. And also there will be trainings for all sorts of personnel. This is, these are all uh, what the consultants will be uh, looking at. If we are really establishing a Civil Aviation Training Institute, we will also be looking at its interface with other um, training institutions in Hong Kong. Next, Mr. Yik Ming. As for the policy address, well, actually, when the CEO was here, I also um, raised this point. That is, um, for this time around, we are attaching more importance to high-value uh, added services. So how about our port? It's not just about aviation. You are thinking about setting up a new maritime body. So um, we will also be looking at our ports. I hope that the secretary can give me a clear answer. Second, we understand that um, there is a lack of plan for the logistics industry. and in Tinbon 
and Chengyi. If the land is uh, put up for tender, then it's going to be costing us um, um, quite a lot of money per square foot, and the operators would find it very difficult to afford the rent, and the competitiveness uh, will be undermined. I did ask the administration whether we can take a leave out of the book of Shanghai or Singapore, uh, like um, we can um, use um, the uh, warehouses um, for rent to the SMEs. Third, Hong Kong Port um, Study 2030 suggests that um, the public cargo working area in Stone Cutters Island can be upgraded to become um, a more sophisticated facility. Now we don't have um, enough uh, facilities um, in terms of um, the barge um, berths. Um, for the uh, vessels coming down from the Pearl River Delta, and that, that improvement um, is a welcome development. But the um, public cargo working area contractors wrote to me expressing concerns that if um, the Stonecutters Island facilities um, are going to be used for this purpose, uh, then um, they, they would be driven out and the contractors have been playing a pretty important role. They don't mind um, moving further out. The paper is um, silent uh, on any reprovisioning um, arrangement for them, so they are exceedingly concerned by the situation. So they asked me to um, set up a meeting with um, the secretary because um, they um, they they find it difficult to survive. Secretary, yes, about the uh, public cargo handling areas in Stonecutters Island. Um, we're going to upgrade these um, to a modern. Uh, Facility now that's um, the recommendation of the 2030 Hong Kong P study. Now um, we will enable the uh, river tray vessels to uh, use the facilities as well. For this to happen, um, we will have um, to consider the arrangement for the existing users. Mr. Yick um, mentioned um, the need to uh, remember. Um, the uh, the port um, development while we are taking uh, forward um, the development that much I agree uh, so we have to have um, the um, development in the software as well as um, the hardware now how will we uh, incorporate um, the the port development and this will certainly be considered indeed um, the maritime development and port development should go hand in hand. We need to have um, the throughput. Uh, we need to have um, the the port and all the um, logistical um, the uh, industries that uh, will have room for development and warehouses. Secretary, Chairman, uh, the land for logistics industry. Uh, whether well, there can be any multi-story uh, buildings. Now, this is something that we are considering at the moment. Fernando Cheng, Yu Xi Wing, Ben Chen, Xin Chong Kai, and Cheng, Paul Che, Albert Chen, I draw a line there. Lam Tai Fai. We have to bring this um, item uh, to a close by 5.20. We're overrunning a little bit, Dr. Fernando Cheng. Uh, Chairman, we are very concerned about the third runway, and this is going to be. Um, Another white elephant project. The secretary is telling us that um, there is a need for that. The airport authority is telling us the same. Now we are particularly concerned. A couple of days ago, the uh, airport daily um, reported uh, on the uh, theft of luggage, and I think um, that it has it says a lot about the the management and and someone was uh, actually lying. Um, Mr. Lam Chu Ying uh, said. That um, the um, airport design was on the basis of the horizon up to 2040. And in terms of freight, uh, we can reach um, 9 billion uh, tons uh, passenger, uh, 7.8 billion um, passengers. 2013 uh, freight, um, the volume is standing at 4.2. A million or forty six percent of the design capacity passenger uh, fifty nine million 
and it is about 69% of uh, the design capacity so there is still some way uh, away uh, from um, the capacity level if I may put this to the um, secretary we are still um, not clear about um, the, the use of the airspace you are building the third runway while at the same time you are uh, negotiating over the airspace now this is going to cost us um, um, billions and billions of dollars now it is difficult for us to uh, seek funding uh, for the uh, welfare services to start with but here you are very generous uh, with the funding if you look at the passenger and freight uh, volumes it is um, there is no justification for the third runway to be built can you elaborate Secretary, well, Chairman, I mean, I may not have enough time to um, go into detail about this question, but let me try. Now, the air, some said that the airport has a huge capacity. Now, that was on the basis of um, the 1990s. Um, the the consultancy report uh, commissioned by the um, Provisional um, Airport Authority, and that didn't take into account um, the topography and also all the constraints imposed by the topography and, uh, and other um, factors. By the middle part of the 1990s, there was another consultant uh, that highlighted um, the, the uh, capacity of um, the airport uh, um, runways. And we have uh, about 63 uh, movements, and we also um, had uh, capacity constraint um, uh, of um, the runways. Now, Mr. Fernando Jung is uh, quoting from um, the forecast from earlier consultancy report. Mr. Jung, Chairman, I understand that the freight volume uh, has uh, remained um, pretty much stable for the past four years. Now, the figures that I quoted uh, were um, government figures uh, from the master plan. Now, you may say that um, this has been overtaken by events. What makes you um, so optimistic that we will be um, exceeding the uh, design capacity going forward? Secretary, over the past couple of years, our freight uh, volume has been increasing. In 2014, uh, com compared with uh, 2013, um, the rate of increase has been 6%. Uh, that has been uh, increased year on year. In Hong Kong, at the end of uh, 2013, Hong Kong is uh, one of the busiest um, airports in the world, and so there has not been a decline in um, the, the freight volume. Mr. Yu Siwei, now in 2013, um, the uh, movement, airport movement, is um, 63 uh, movements uh, per hour. According to uh, forecasts, by the second half of this year, it's going to be uh, hitting 68 movements per hour. And according to the AA, and this is um, a, um, a, capac a capacity level, now even um, if the funding uh, is granted, um, the third runway will not be um, commissioned until 2023. For the next coming eight years, what measures does the government have? to make sure that uh, because of the constraint of the airport, uh, Hong Kong will not lose um, the, the flights um, to other airports. Does the government have any uh, specific study on this one? Second, I must declare that I'm asking a question about the Sky Pier. My company uh, has um, a director that has um, shareholding in the Sky Pier. And uh, my question about the Sky Pier is that um, there are eight ports um, that are linked with um, Skype here with uh, 80 or so um, um, connections, but the uh, occupancy rate is about 30%, um, and there is a vacancy of uh, about 70%. This is a bit of a waste. The local people and the tourism sector have been asking the administration to open up the Skype here um, as um, a public pair for people to use um, in Dongchong for the businessmen to uh, to use uh, for them to um, travel to the Pearl River Delta region. But the government has been dragging its feet. 
Now, I was told that um, it's got nothing to do with AA, uh, nor has it got anything to do with um, the THB. It is mainly the Security Bureau. Now, is it a question of um, the Security Bureau, or is it a question of um, the THB uh, that um, prevents uh, the Sky Pier from being opened up as um, public pier? Secretary, now like Mr. Yu Si Wing said, um, the runway capacity it is and now um, 60 odd um, movements. Now the maximum capacity is um, 68 uh, movements per hour. So in the coming one or two years, it's going to be uh, reaching uh, capacity. Now even with um, the third runway, uh, will, it will not be commissioned until 2023. So in the meantime, how can we maximize um, the capacity of the runways? And uh, this is something the AA has to consider. And the ATC, uh, we need to um, s optimize um, the the um, uh, flight movements, and this will be considered by the AA. The Sky Pier, it is um, there to facilitate um, travelers from the PRD when they come to um, the Chatlapcock Airport. It will be more convenient uh, for them uh, to use um, the Sky Pier. So the this pier uh, should not be considered from uh, the tr uh, transport point of view, we have to consider this uh, for in terms of um, the the immigration and um, and so on. Mr. Yu, well, the the secretary f uh, has not um, answered um, the question direct. How can we make sure that uh, we are going to be losing uh, some of the uh, the business uh, because of the saturation of the uh, airport runways, secretary? It's uh, from the airlines' um, point point of view. Um, um, they're running a business, and they have to consider um, the um, airport um, in Hong Kong, the connectivity of uh, Hong Kong's airport uh, with the rest of the world. But if um, there is a limit uh, on the airport, um, then the airlines uh, will have to optimize um, the arrangement accordingly. Mr. Ben Chen, Chairman. Everybody is uh, concerned about the airport. If I may uh, turn uh, now to um, shipping, the ocean liners, um, the secretary said, um, so did the um, policy address. Um, the uh, ocean liners are getting larger, um, and the, the tonnage is um, getting ever larger. It, it means that uh, the remission will become uh, higher. In Kwai Chung over the years, um, the residents have been on the receiving end of a lot of pollution. According to the EPD, uh, this uh, has been confirmed that um, air quality in Kwai Chung is uh, leaving a lot to be desired. Mainly, the pollution mainly comes from the container terminal. Now, the world over, um, uh, in California and Kaohsiung, Shanghai, um, about 60 countries, and um, they have um, the um, uh, on onshore electricity supply system for for the vessels. So, will the government be bringing in the onshore electricity supply uh, system? Will there be an action plan to compel all these um, vessels um, to use um, to switch to electricity uh, when they are berthing uh, in Hong Kong? Now, this is going to be going down well in Hong Kong. Will this uh, be done? Secretary, when indeed um, the THB has been working with um, the ENB to see uh, what measures can be adopted to minimize the emissions uh, caused uh, by the uh, vessels at birth in Hong Kong. Onshore electricity supply is something that uh, we are currently doing, and also not only Hong Kong, it would involve um, the entire PRD in terms of um, air quality, um, emissions, and so on. If uh, the whole PRD can do something about the situation, we will, have, uh, we will achieve a pretty good cumulative uh, effect. But the ENB is um, taking the lead, but the THB is working alongside with them. Secretary, do you mean that in the future we will be um, making sure that when Ocean-going vessels, both in Hong Kong, they must use onshore electricity supply. When will this happen? Um, we will have to work more in this area. Maybe the Director of Marine can answer this question. I'm not going to sub 
implements anything. However, with regards to emission reduction, in the past few years, we have done a lot. For example, um, we ask the ocean-going uh, vessels to use fuel with a lower emission when they are birthed in Hong Kong. So for onshore electricity supply, is it under your bureau or the Environment Bureau? So I think this is under the EA panel. Maybe you can um, ask your questions on a more suitable occasion. I have looked at your statement, and I have also um, read your uh, paper. It's about paragraph 32, and it's about airspace. You said that in 2007, you have already discussed with China and Macau, and the third runway has already been taken into consideration. So can you tell us the latest development? Now, if the third runway is to be commissioned in 2023, and how many more uh, space slots can we have? And how many more flight movements will we have? Please give us more specific figures. I don't want the third runway to be built and then nothing can be achieved. Now, uh, in the future, if we can have um, 90 flights movements in the future, however, if we do not have enough airspace, then what will happen? As for the actual situation, it's not about airspace slots. It's about aviation routes and the direction of taking off and landing, etc. Perhaps after the meeting, I can provide you with more information and writing. After the year 2000, different civil aviation administrations in China discovered that the PLD airspace uh, was a very busy airspace. It's like New York. There are several airports um, in a small area. So that's why we thought that we need to have standardized plans and criteria so that we can use the space in a safer and more efficient manner. We want to achieve a women's situation. We uh, want to optimize uh, the space structure. For example, we um, should standardize our uh, measurements, etc. So all these have been taken into consideration. We have also taken into account the third runway of Hong Kong, the third runway of Shenzhen, and the five runways in Guangdong or in Guangzhou. So for the PLD uh, region, the military will also be making use of it. So all these have been taken into consideration. In 2007, we started this consolidated plan. We have drawn up short, medium, and long-term measures. We had this three-party arrangements to look at all these issues. Now in Hong Kong, we are considering the development of a third runway, and the 2007 consolidated plan was a foundation. If we can achieve the objective set out in the consolidated plan, then when we have a third runway, we can have 102 flight movements per hour. So when it reaches 102, does it mean that there's no limit in our airspace and we can indeed have 102 flight movements an hour? Is there a limitation in the sky? Well, the so-called limitation in the sky is that uh, we should make proper arrangements. That is, um, at the same moment, um, a certain number of planes um, will be allowed at a certain um level, etc. I would like to ask about uh, talent training. It is mainly about aviation. 
Now we have about 700 uh, maritime companies in Hong Kong, and we also have a maritime and aviation training fund in place. So for mar the maritime industry, how many um, talents do we need and what profession should they be in? Is this a vocational training or are we planning to provide programs in universities? Later on, I'll ask um, Ms. Chen to answer this question or provide you with more details. As for the positioning of this training fund, it's not just about vocational training. Um, higher level uh, courses will be provided. We also have incentive and scholarship schemes to encourage people to um, take such courses. Angelina? Thank you, Chairman. As for the 100 million maritime and aviation training fund, we are aiming at three areas. First, about uh, maritime talents. Each month, we will be providing six thousand dollars for students. So, um, for undergraduates or top graduates, if it, they already have certain uh, maritime experiences, they can progress step by step, and they can um, sit for. Um, Captain examinations. This is uh, type one. And for type two, we also provide different scholarships in different universities. For example, for those who are studying law or engineering, we can also provide them with scholarships. And also, we encourage um, matching between local and overseas universities. Students can o go overseas for one semester for studying. And 10 of our students are now going overseas each year to Singapore, Denmark, the UK, and the US for maritime related programs as well as IT programs and engineering programs. Some of them also study uh, maritime law. This is type 2. And for type 3, this is to target in service practitioners. We hope that they can continue their studies, add value to themselves, and attain higher professional levels. So funds are also provided um, to them for taking courses and setting for examinations. Each one can get $18,000 uh, as assistance. This is the professional training and examination refund scheme, and also the MS. TI and some other organizations are providing trainings for um, maritime staff. They can also get refund from the uh, refund scheme. I hope that more information can be provided to the young people in three to five years' time after they graduate, uh, for example, from university, then they would know. Um, what kind of job opportunities there are in the maritime industry. Otherwise, they may think that um, they do not have a very bright future in this industry. Yes, I agree with you. We have been doing a lot of promotion. Lately, there have been a number of publicity campaigns. This is not only about the Transport and Housing Bureau. I hope that the government can um, publicize more about its uh, incentive programs. Mr. Paul Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Oh, for the XLL, one of the most one of the uh, greatest challenge is the co location of customs clearance. And also members asked about uh, the airspace issue. Just now, the secretary explained a lot about the 2007 consolidated plan. Now, for the um, standardized procedures, planning, etc., have these been achieved already? It seems that you are still endeavoring to do that, so they have not been achieved, right? Uh, I would like to ask the 
Aviation Department, Civil Aviation Department to answer this question. As for the standardization, that is in terms of planning, uh, procedures, uh, criteria, etc., this is our objective. And also, there are short term, uh, medium term, and long term initiatives. As for the 2007 plan, we hope that by 2020, many of the measures uh, would already be in place. CAD, please. Thank you, Chairman. As for the 2007 tripartite uh, team, that is, uh, which covers the CAD, the Civil Aviation Administration of China and Civil Aviation Authority of Macau, um, they drew up short, medium, and long term initiatives. For some um, short term initiatives, they have already been implemented. For example, the um, entry points between Hong Kong and China, the number has increased from two to four. It would make um, air traffic more efficient. Well, for some planes, if they do not need to land in Hong Kong, uh, however, they are landing in Shenzhen and Guangzhou. With the addition of these two new entry points, then they do not have to enter the BC airspace. Sorry, I need to interrupt. You have explained about this in the paper already. So I would like to know about the uh, initiatives that have not been implemented yet. Yes, the um, initiatives that have been implemented, I have mentioned them just now. As for the medium and long term measures, for example, the um, standardization of uh, certain criteria, for example, can we use the same measurement units, etc.? Um, that is something we need to look into because in Hong Kong we are still using feet and China is using meters. And there may also be overlapping of aviation rules, so we need a lot of standardization. After doing that, our space, airspace can be um, enhanced. Some people say that you are not only standardizing all these. It seems that the whole operation uh, would be needs to be standardized. That is, there is only one control tower in the PLD, then all these problems can be resolved. We will be doing that. As for the 2007 plan, no, we haven't talked about that. Yes, there are some rumors. People say that uh, if there is only one air control um, center, that would be best. However, that involves one country, two systems. So uh, practically, it's not that easy. Mr. Albert Chen, the secretary is responsible for the land, the sea, and the air. So for container terminal and airports, I think they are major facilities in Hong Kong, and they have huge impacts on different fronts, for example, environmental protection, etc. Lately, a white, uh, Chinese white dolphin uh, was injured. Its name is Hope. A lot of people are very concerned because it's injured by uh, passing vessels. A lot of green groups um, have been trying to help the dolphin, but it seems that the administration hasn't done anything. But dolphin is very important for Hong Kong. And now with our economic development, it seems that dolphins are disappearing from our seas or from our waters. Now you are planning to have a reclamation in our middle waters. Do you have plans to relocate our container terminals? Amsterdam is planning to do that. As for the location of the container terminals, it was decided in the 60s. 
that may not be the ideal location when it comes to Hong Kong's long-term development because the container terminals are not connected with railways and they lack a backup land. So that's why there has been criticism saying that um, the container terminals in Hong Kong lack competitiveness. So uh, with regard to the airport's third runway, um, there has also been a lot of objection. This is not the right direction because for a lot of planes, they cannot fly towards Chun Moon when they take off. So the runway is um, half handicapped and it also has a huge impact on the neighboring uh, residents and also it means a disaster for Chinese white dolphins. So would the secretary be looking into this? Um, last time you, object, you rejected the CDS4 study. But for the long-term development of container terminal and uh, third runway, will you be conducting more in-depth studies? Secretary, uh, Chairman, um, the Marine Department uh, can supplement on the white Chinese white dolphin and that um, got injured. The container terminal can it be relocated in Singapore? It has been relocated um, westward. In Hong Kong, um, if relocation has to be done, I will have to consider the alternative location. Will recommendation be needed? And a whole host of complicated issues have to be con uh, considered. From the uh, consultant's um, findings, up to 2030, if we can adopt improvement measures like um, the um, port uh, backup area and the optimization of um, the land in the vicinity, we should be able to cope with um, the growth um, in the um, container trade. But indeed, um, this is a major issue, and we do need to um, adopt a long-term view. The same can be said about the airport. If um, the airport has to be expanded, uh, it will be um, done at the um, at Lepcock um, Airport, or uh, uh, if you're saying that uh, we should consider a second airport, then it will not be um, a um, practical proposition. Mr. Lam Tai Fai, Chairman uh, Parafai, uh, I've got three questions. Um, uh, on the basis of uh, the 12 uh, five year plan, um, the uh, government uh, will be uh, taking forward the uh, shipping uh, industry development to tie in with um, the 12 five year plan. Uh, the 12 five year plan is coming to an end. I'd like to hear from the administration. In the past, how did you take full advantage of the 12 five year plan? And what have you done? Uh, have you um, seized um, the, the opportunity or have you wasted the opportunity? Second, uh, para five again, and the government uh, will promote um, the uh, transport, um, the uh, facilities, um, and Hong Kong will play the role as a super connector by serving as the platform for mainland maritime companies to go global. Now, the mainland market is um, developing rapidly. Do they need Hong Kong as um, a platform, as a springboard? Can you be more specific um, in this regard? How many companies have you helped? to uh, go global, can you give us some uh, quantifiable answer? Now, super connector, uh, Mr. Secretary, can you um, describe um, this phrase? Uh, what is uh, the difference between a super connector and um, an ordinary connector? Secretary, well, connector means that we can through uh, Hong Kong as um, an important gateway to the mainland. We can bring outside businesses into the mainland, and we can also uh, help the mainland uh, maritime, com maritime companies to go global. In terms of um, freight um, business, uh, Hong Kong does enjoy uh, pretty good advantages. Can you be more specific about the quantity? Well, the percentage is 9% is pretty really high. We have 700 or so companies that are um, dealing with um,
different um, aspects of shipping services. In the 12 5 year plan, it is uh, made very clear that Hong Kong's uh, position as a shipping international shipping center, maritime um, and aviation center, uh, has been confirmed. We are uh, moving forward uh, in the direction mapped out in the 12 5 year plan. If Mr. Lam Tai Fai would like to find out about more more about the 700 shipping related companies and also the businesses they are engaging in, no, no, you don't have to. I'm just I'm just asking um, what uh, companies have you helped um, and what is the meaning of Super Connector? Uh, Secretary, we can make available the information to Mr. Lam. What about uh, Super Connector? As I said, uh, we're playing the uh, connecting role. On the one hand, we have the advantage of uh, uh, proximity to the mainland, and this um, offers a business opportunity. Mr. Lam, my question is um, the development of the mainland is uh, very rapid. Now, how can you be become the connector or the super connector? We have to make sure that you can live up to um, this, this position or this role as a super connector. We are concerned um, how we can be such a super connector. Secretary, well, if you ask me if, um, to quantify it, uh, Hong Kong has uh, been playing um, a role of um, transshipment. A lot of um, freight uh, volumes come from the mainland. The volume is uh, pretty high. Of course, uh, Mr. Lam would like to have more statistics. Um, I can send and make them available after the meeting. Okay, and that's it for the uh, first segment of um, this meeting. Thank you very much, and Secretary and the relevant officials for being with us. Moving on next um, to briefing by the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development on the relevant policy initiatives in the CE's 2015 policy address. Uh, shall we wait a bit uh, for the uh, officials um, to enter the meeting room, um, and then we'll get on with uh, the second segment. Thank you very much, Secretary. Mr. So and his team. Secretary So, I um, beg your pardon, we uh, overrun a little bit. I understand that um, your script has been made available to all the members, and I am not going to uh, invite you to uh, read out um, the script, and we go straight to um, the questioning. Uh, Gary Fan, Xin Chong Kai, Wang Ting Kuang, and Frankie Yik. And Zheng. And Paul Chair, four minutes each, please. Mr. Gary Fan, Chairman, my question for the Secretary. In the 2014 policy address, some um, C. Y. Long admitted that uh, over concentration of um, visitors to Hong Kong uh, from a certain place uh, will um, cause a uh, pressure to Hong Kong. Now, a year on, uh, the government has um, put together this. Um, um, report um, on the handling capacity in Hong Kong. It doesn't focus on um, the issue of uh, parallel traders. The MTRC is uh, inundated um, to capacity in the North Fanling, uh, Yunlong. There are so many parallel goods traders, and IVS and visitors are uh, really causing so much trouble. The government kept saying uh, that, that um, there, there will be, um, that there's likely to be um, a cap uh, put on the um, the um, multiple uh, visa um, visitors in in this uh, policy address, there is uh, no mention whatsoever regarding the IVS and also the uh, multiple um, entry visa scheme. In Para three, and the government said that um, they will be um, enhancing uh, enhancing the scheme. That we have seen. Um, the uh, increase in the uh, number um, to by 47 million. There are 30 million people who are not uh, staying overnight, and there are more and more mainland visitors uh, who are causing um, 
loosened some to the people of Hong Kong. Now you have been talking about um, these measures to deal with um, this never-ending, ever-increasing uh, IVS um, visitors. Um, there has been talked about her uh, for more than 20 months. How soon are they going to deal with it? Secretary, thanks very much, Mr. Gary Fan, for the question. We are concerned about um, the impact that um, the parallel goods uh, traders are causing to Hong Kong. The government has been taking uh, quite a lot of measures. What, Secretary, I'm talking about the, uh, the, smuggle, the smugglers, if I may, Chairman. The law enforcement agencies have been adopting measures like uh, we um, intercept um, the suspected um, traders um, for inspection and we collect um, intelligence at the black spots and we maintain the liaison with um, the Shenzhen um, authorities um, and, and deal with um, these um, parallel traders. Uh, between June and December in 2014 in, in the north, um, Fenling and Lok Ma Chao, uh, 62 joint actions have been taken. 420 suspected parallel goods traders um, have been arrested or have overstayed um, the, the visas, um, these mainland people. In fact, um, the authorities between Hong, between Hong Kong and mainland um, take joint action at Lok Ma Chao, um, border control points. Uh, some of them uh, use um, baby prams um, to engage in illegal activities. Between um, June and December last year, we have um, taken 62 uh, joint operations. 94 uh, cases uh, have been detected, and 1.9 billion items have been seized. Well, Secretary, why don't you tell us uh, something about um, the, the source of the problem? You're not tackling um, the source of the problem, Secretary. I'm answering Mr. Fan's question. I'm telling Mr. Fan what the government has been doing, that the um, law enforcement agencies have um, taken measures. The, pol the uh, police, immigration, and customs excise have taken measures. The immigration department has um, formulated a list. Now, in this list, uh, from the intelligence, uh, from the um, entry and exit um, data, 12,800 suspected people have been put on this um, list, and they have been denied. But well, Secretary, can you can you tell us? Have you visited um, the, um, the 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 site, oh, Mr. Fan? I think uh, you have been um, interrupting um, the the Secretary. Your time is up. Can I join for the second round? No, we don't have the second round because of a time constraint. Mr. Sin Chung Kai, Chairman, two questions. I am concerned about um, the uh, legislation for regulating the travel agencies and are seeking for this to be um, enacted um, this um, legislative year. I am uh, very concerned about um, the, the timing. Now, in your speech uh, and also in your uh, paper, you talked about the three-prong approach, um, enforcement, um, publicity and education. Uh, with regard to the trade description ordinance, it started um, pretty well um, as um, a, um, a, force, a forceful piece of legislation. But a lot of cases have failed to end up in court. Simply put, the number of prosecution cases that remain um, pretty low, and this is uh, very disappointing. In particular, there are some uh, contract um, kind of services and th 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 um, that are troubling, troubling us. That the uh, communications authority and so on uh, did not take sufficient number of uh, prosecution. How can you make sure that um, this is effective? Uh, is um, the legislation not sufficiently effective, or is the enforcement not sufficiently effective, Secretary? Well, regarding these um, irregular irregularities, the key thing is um, to mount uh, publicity and education campaigns uh, so that um, the, the traders uh, would understand uh, what are on the wrong side of the law. In terms of law enforcement, the customs and excise, uh, when deciding whether taking uh, criminal uh, proceedings, uh, will uh, look at the evidence to make sure that there will um, 
there will not be any uh, any doubts involved. A lot of cases are still uh, under investigation, and this would take time. The law enforcement agencies would um, adopt uh, various measures or channels to make um, the public aware of the progress of these cases. The Customs and Excise uh, has um, received uh, complaints and the number of cases that for which um, investigation has been completed. The number stands at more than a thousand. In fact, that all, all enforcement agencies have been doing so much work. Now, after the implementation of the trade description ordinance, the traders are more and more aware of um, the the illegal acts. I think this is the most effective way to deal with um, these illegal practices. Take a the question is about prosecution. Yes, I know all this from your paper. Ever since its um, full implementation on 19th of July 2013, what's the number of prosecutions? You have investigated 1,000 cases, but the number of prosecution is low. So um, is the legislation not sufficient uh, for you to initiate prosecution. Well, can you just give us the figure? It's very simple. If you don't have the figures with you, um, you can provide them to us later. Yes, I can answer the member's question. Just now, the secretary said that we have completed the investigation of about 100 cases, over 800 of them after um, the investigation are deemed um, to be unsubstantiated. As for other cases, we have given them advice. Um, there have been 83 uh, prosecutions, and a dozen of them are still underway. About 70 of um, the cases have, or the prosecution cases, have been closed. There are different results. For example, some involves imprisonment, some involves imprisonment and fine, and some. Um, our social uh, service order, and the maximum imprisonment was one one month, and the maximum fine was over one hundred thousand dollars. How about the communications authority? Has it taken out any prosecution? Yes, there have been a number of complaints which have been handled, but there was no prosecution. So there was not a single prosecution by the communications authority. Your time is up, Mr. Wong Ting Kwong. The FTU has um, looked at the issue of IVS uh, visitors. Their spending habits has changed. For the visitors that have visited Hong Kong many times, they gradually changed from sightseeing to shopping. And many of these IVS visitors are now shopping in the Anti new towns. This is a change in um, shopping habits, and that's why there are more and more congestions in the NT. For example, Typo Shatin, um, the residents' life uh, being affected. It's very difficult for them to uh, buy daily necessities. The FTU has suggested that shopping centers be built at the border. A place close to the border can be identified so that a um, super shopping mall can be built for the mainland uh, visitors. I think this can solve a number of problems. For the retail and wholesale industries, um, the catering industries, etc., such a more would bring about a lot of benefits in the long run. The boosting of um, such an economy would be conducive to the economic development of Hong Kong. Some studies have um, been conducted in these areas. The NT North border area should be used in a better manner. For example, building a super mall for mainland visitors, that would bring about a lot of benefits. Hong Kong goods can be displayed at such a mall, and IVS visitors would find it convenient. I would like to know the government's view on this, and will you be assisting um, the development of such an area? 
we have reviewed our tourism facilities, and we've said that we will be enhancing our capacity to receive visitors. We also want our visitors to um, go to different places in Hong Kong instead of concentrating in a small number of areas. The suggestion is a useful one, and I understand that some developers are very interested in building shopping areas along the border. Some of my development bureau colleagues have also um, talked to us about such possibilities. Uh, we are supportive of such a proposal, but of course it's very complicated and a lot of planning is needed. Well, we will provide our support whenever possible. As for um, tourism policy, we will also uh, try our best to support such an initiative so that uh, visitors can also be attracted to other areas of Hong Kong. Mr. Lam Tai Fei, I'm sorry, I make a mistake. It should be Mr. Yi Ming first. I would like to ask about the Competition Commission. Uh, Mr. Tan Kapeu is not here now, but he asked questions about oil prices, and he asked about a um, joint pricing. Um, an organization has written to the Competition uh, Commission asking it to look into um, oil prices. Mr. Yeh, I do not want to waste your time, but I don't think this is uh, something that we should discuss at this panel. And previously, I have also said that, well, Chairman, please let me finish my question first. It's within this paper. Well, for the, well the Competition Commission hasn't given me a reply yet, uh, but it said that, well, because the competition ordinance has not come into operation yet, so um, it's not commenting on this case. So, Secretary, when do you think the Commission will start working so that I can explain to um, my constituents? As for the uh, competition ordinance, it will be implemented in phases. First of all, a competition commission will be set up, and it, a tribunal has to be set up. In May and August 2013, um, these two things have been done. And in the future, before the full implementation of the competition ordinance, the com competition commission and the competition tribunal would have a lot of work to do. Uh, for example, they have to uh, formulate rules and guidelines. In November last year, we already briefed members on this. The Competition Commission uh, has conducted a consultation now is looking at people's views and um, amendments will be made to the guidelines. And also the Competition Tribunal will also be looking at the President's directions as well as rules relating to the operations and proceedings. So all this work will be completed in the first half of this year. As for other subsidiary regulations, uh, we will also have to work on them. For example, some of the key provisions of the competition ordinance will be applicable to six statutory bodies, while um, they will not be applicable to bodies which are not statutory bodies. So all these we'll have to uh, look into. Subsidiary legislation will be tabled before the Legislative Council. After doing all these, the competition ordinance will come into full operation. Afterwards, the Competition Commission will have the power to investigate. Just now, a member asked about the operation in a certain sector. When the Competition Commission is empowered, more uh, information can be collected by it, and it can um, look at such cases and try to find out whether um, there have 
been abuses in the uh, trace you mentioned just now. So can you give me a date? This is October, November, December this year. Give me a rough date. We hope that all this can be done by the end of this year. Thank you. I'll draw a line here. There are still four members who would like to ask questions. Ms. Um, An Cheng, uh, Paul Chen, Yu Suing, and Lam Tai Fei. An Cheng. Thank you, Chairman. Just now, another member asked about mainland visitors. The Secretary happily announced that um, for the last year, we had over 41 million mainland visitors. However, we do not have enough uh, places for them to shop, and also Hong Kong people, uh, Hong Kong residents, are very un unhappy because um, like weekends when they want to go shopping, um, the shopping places are very congested, and also it's impossible to stop the visitors from coming to Hong Kong. There are many um, grassrooters in Hong Kong, and many of them work in industries which serve um, these visitors. Just now, Mr. Wong Ting Kwong said that uh, more tourist attractions should be built, and actually, many of these visitors come to shop in Hong Kong, and they would return immediately to um, the mainland after shopping. So maybe um, they shouldn't be lured to the urban areas. Now many of them go to Twin Moon and Shang Shui. Uh, really, can we think about building shopping malls for them close to the boundary so that they do not have to go to our new towns or urban areas? I think the secretary should really think twice about this. And before the handover, I think the uh, visitor per year was about 10 million, and we had uh, um, over 400,000 hotel rooms. Now we have over 60 million visitors. Do we have 70,000 hotel rooms? Oh, there is a shortage of hotel rooms in Hong Kong. And some overseas visitors who are not from the mainland think that the hotel rooms in Hong Kong are too expensive. That's why they are not willing to come here. And even for um, mainland visitors, they do not want to spend the night here because of the expensive hotel rates. So I think the Secretary should also be looking at our hotel room supply. Yes, I would like to thank you for your question. When I answered Mr. Wong, I already said that the government is a supportive if um, there are so shopping mall developments along the boundaries, we will try our best to help. As for hotels, you mentioned um, the number of rooms, 40,000, or from 2014 to, mm, well, by the end of 2014, we had 244 hotels. The number of hotel rooms was 72,721. So you can see that there was a significant increase in the number of hotel rooms. In the coming few years, hotel rooms will further increase to eight, to over 84,000. Well, the Disneyland and Ocean Park are planning to build new hotels. The government also has um, ancillary plans to help. For example, some lands are sold uh, for the construction of hotels. Some industrial buildings um, are also allowed to be converted into hotels. Next to the Kaida Cruise um, Terminal, there will be six hotel sites, and they will be launched one by one towards the end of this year. We hope that we can provide more hotel choices for our visitors, and this will uh, mean more hotel resources for tourists. Mr. Um, Porsche, as for border cities in the world, they all have this huge business opportunities. That is, people will cross the boundary to shop because the commodity prices of the two places are different. Secretary, you used to live in Canada. You know that a lot of um, 
Canadians and Americans cross the border to shop. So this is a good opportunity for Hong Kong. However, the government doesn't plan too well in this area. And it seems that it's even not aware of this business opportunity. And also, there are a lot of grievances amongst uh, residents. Uh, Mr. Wong Ting Kwong's suggestion is not such a new one. It has been um, suggested for many years. So how come the government hasn't done much to handle this issue? Secretary, thanks very much, Mr. Che, for the question. Now, previously, it was um, the private sector that um, dominated the development of um, these um, shopping uh, malls. Now, we have um, more uh, visitors coming to Hong Kong, and we cannot deviate uh, from this um, private sector-driven approach. Now, there are certain uh, developers that um, um, are interested in these business opportunities, and they would like to find um, identify um, suitable location for this. Now we are we have um, the problem of scarcity of land, and the uh, private developers. Um, it would be a good idea for them to uh, make investment in these um, shopping malls, and the government uh, will uh, certainly uh, tie in with this development. Mr. J. Well, the government keeps saying that um, it is um, moderately proactive. Now we have um, this very uh, serious livelihood um, issue. At least um, there can be land and they can be identified uh, near the boundary and, and um, convert converted into um, the relevant facilities. Now the government brought in the um, ban um, on on the uh, baby formula. Um, the government um, introduced uh, a ban on um, the mainland uh, pregnant women. Now there is um, a very strong uh, public sentiment in this regard. We do have pretty good uh, business um, opportunities here. Why doesn't the government um, act uh, in an appropriately proactive manner, Secretary? Now we're not wasting any business opportunities. Uh, we are working um, on this. Perhaps uh, Mr. Che might wish to talk with uh, talk with uh, Mr. Wong that. Um, the government has been uh, sparing no effort um, to help the private sector to develop the uh, resources there. Mr. J, well, I know that um, work is um, being undertaken behind the scene. We have um, so much um, public uh, negative public sentiment. The government seems to be very passive, and the nuisance um, is um, is um, going on. If the government um, can relieve uh, the pressure there, uh, then I'm sure that um, the, our compatriots uh, can complement complement with one another. The government should um, expedite the process, Secretary. As I said, the government has been uh, proactive uh, in taking forward um, the development. I don't think you should link this with the constitutional development. We're talking about the um, development of the tourism resources, Mr. J. Well, it seems that uh, your bureau has not done anything. Um, you, you have been dragging your feet. Well, I don't agree with that. Secretary, if uh, you have any measures, please uh, let us know. If you ask me to ask Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, then uh, Mr. Wong can become the secretary, not you. Mr. Yu Si Wing, Chairman, from uh, last year's um, uh, statistics, uh, we have received uh, 68 million visitors, 12% uh, um, up. Um, mainland visitors, um, the increase has been um, hovering around 7%. Last year, Q4, um, we have seen a reduction because of the Occupy movement towards the end of last year. Now, my question for the administration is this How can um, the uh, government uh, revive um, the visitors' uh, confidence in Hong Kong? And also, um, the high-end um, visitors. Last year, the hotel industry uh, is telling us that um, the hotel room um, 
price uh, has come down. And for those um, overnight uh, visitors, what measures does the government have um, to, to lure them? And the Kai Tech uh, cruise terminal, according to the mainland, uh, visitors can um, travel to um, Japan and Korea via Hong Kong. Uh, the idea is to help with um, the ocean uh, liner uh, business or the cruise uh, business um, development in Hong Kong. Now, from the statistics, um, that there are only um, 56 um, ship calls um, in Hong Kong this year. Um, this is uh, a long way away from um, the capacity. Will the government be liaising with um, the uh, mainland authorities to attract uh, more mainland visitors to travel um, to overseas countries um, on uh, by uh, by sea uh, via Hong Kong? Well, we have seen an increase of 8.2 percent um, last year. The overnight uh, visitors. After the Occupy movement, um, the Tourism Board has been uh, promoting Hong Kong um, vigorously. Yes, Chairman, uh, we hope that um, we have um, a, a mixture of um, visitors uh, coming from all over the world. After the Occupy movement, the, the Tourism Board uh, between January and March uh, has uh, been promoting um, Hong Kong um, in these um, short haul um, districts, and we're telling um, these um, different um, regions that uh, Hong Kong is uh, back to normal, and the resources um, about seventy five percent of the resources will be devoted to overseas market, in particular the short haul market, and we adopt the multimedia. Um, to um, do the promotion, and we are inviting um, the um, trades uh, from these uh, different uh, markets to come to Hong Kong. We've been to Taiwan and Japan for the promotion, and the um, response has been very, very good. Now, in the mainland, uh, we uh, put a lot of resources um, to uh, places outside Guangdong. Uh, we're attracting a lot more people to come and stay overnight in Hong Kong. Now, Mr. Yik asked a question about the overnight. Mr. Yu, in fact, asked us um, how uh, we can attract more overnight visitors to Hong Kong. And this is precisely what we're doing. As regards um, the cruise terminal, uh, the Kai Tank cruise terminal, the performance uh, has improved uh, compared with um, last year. We had only 28 ship calls uh, last year. This year, we, uh, like Mr. Yu said, to anticipate that 56 uh, ship calls are going to be happening. Uh, we learned um, that um, the number will go up to 60. In April last last uh, last year, we uh, launched um, this um, ACF, um, the Asia Cruise Fund. Now the um, cruise um, the visitors would like to visit more ports. Um, in April last year, we liaised uh, with the um, Tourism Bureau of Taiwan um, to launch the Asia Cruise Fund, or the ACF, uh, for the cruise uh, liners uh, to incorporate Hong Kong into um, the itinerary. And we would uh, offer them some incentives uh, for them to promote Hong Kong as a product. Thanks very much, Kathy. If you have any further details, you might wish to um, let's, let us have them um, in writing. And we hope that there will be more information um, coming through to us. Mr. Lam Tai Fai, Chairman, 75% of uh, the promotional resources will be devoted to the international market. Now, Hong Kong is an international metropolis, and I, I support this um, initiative. The people are coming to Hong Kong to do business and um, to travel, whether they stay overnight or not, uh, will certainly um, push uh, Hong Kong's economy. The, I think it has been um, less than effective in luring uh, overseas visitors to Hong Kong. In 2014, um, the growth uh, lies with uh, the mainland visitors, uh, 16 percent. So whole markets, if you exclude um, mainland China, we have seen um, a zero increase. Long haul market, um, U.S. Canada, a zero increase. New emerging markets, four percent rise, um, mainly 
India and Vietnam. And taken together, the number of visitors still uh, remains uh, at a pretty low level. I read the paper. Uh, you, you're going to develop um, the Ocean Park and the uh, Disneyland. Now, will the um, overseas uh, visitors be interested in them? The cruise terminal uh, remains um, pretty low in terms of uh, performance. Uh, the, the, there are going to be 23 million uh, visitors coming to Hong Kong by cruise, uh, compared with uh, 40, uh, 50 million mainland visitors. Um, they, they are still pretty low. Now, you said that 75% uh, of the promotional resources will be devoted to the international market. Will you be reviewing the existing policy and how are you going to improve um, the, the policy? And what what um, measures do you have up your sleeve? And what um, um, attractions, uh, what more attractions do we have? You devote. Uh, so so many resources in 2014 registered um, no increase in the number of visitors. Do you have any target rate of increase? Secretary, thanks very much, Mr. Lam, for the question. If um, you look at um, the non-mainland uh, visitors, 2014, we have seen a slight increase, a 0.3% increase. If you look at um, other places, the European and, and the U.S. markets, um, the long-haul markets, because of the economic situation, um, the trend is um, going down. This is not something that, that um, Hong Kong um, can do anything about. It is also a trend that um, we have um, a high increase uh, from in visitors from the mainland. Um, this is um, the same trend that is experienced in other places. I've, vis I've been visiting um, a lot of places and they're in their public facilities, and the Putong, Putong Huang has become one of the main um, the, um, the languages uh, being used. So the uh, tourism board uh, would like to have a diverse um, portfolio uh, in terms of visitors, and 76% of uh, the promotional resources are devoted to uh, places outside the mainland. The remaining 24% um, are devoted to places uh, in the mainland, outside Guangdong. Target rate, Secretary, please. I think what we have to look at is um, we have to enrich um, our tourism resources. We have to um, improve um, the the facilities. And Mr. Lam talked about um, the Disneyland um, expansion and the Ocean Park um, expansion. All these uh, initiatives would um, be very attractive to the short haul and long haul. Uh, visitors. Then in, in, in Disneyland, uh, we have um, the Marvel's Iron Man um, development, the franchise, and this is a very popular attraction. And we will be uh, enhancing our attractiveness through these initiatives. Target rate, secretary, for international visitors, secretary. Well, put it simply, we have to optimize and enhance um, the facilities in order to attract uh, more visitors particular high-end um, visitors. Well, I understand that. What about your target rate? You have to improve and enhance. Well, what is the target rate? Well, we're not um, chasing um, after the, the, um, the, the figures. But do you have the figures? If you don't have, say no, just say so, Secretary. Well, our work is um, to enhance our facilities. Yes or no, please? Any target rate? Target rate or increase? 1%, 2%, or 3 Secretary, well, I said many times that uh, we are enhancing um, the facilities, um, the, so no target. That's fine. All right, thank you very much, um, Secretary, and uh, your team uh, for being with us uh, for this item uh, regarding um, the CEDB. Uh, let's move on to the next um, segment. Briefing by the Secretary for the Environment on Relevant Policy Initiatives in the CE's 2015 Policy Address. I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Wang Kam Singh, Secretary for the Environment, and his team um, to enter the conference room. Thank you very much, Secretary Sir. Uh, Secretary, sorry to keep you waiting because um, we have uh, been having uh, a lot of questions. You haven't given us any script. Um, do you want to uh, take a bit of time 
to brief us. If not, uh, we go straight to questions. All right, then there are uh, Xin Chong Kai and Elizabeth Kwok. Uh, Mr. Xin, please. Mr. Xin. Chairman, paragraph 5 uh, refers um, to the consultation between March and June uh, on the development of um, the post um, uh, 2018 um, development of the electricity market. Oil prices have uh, been very volatile. There has been a drop of uh, 50 percent. Uh, the uh, price is $40 per barrel. Uh, in Hong Kong, we do not really use oil for electricity generation. However, natural gas price is also affected. So under such circumstances, yes, I understand that some people are saying that at the end of this year, oil price will go up again. However, other people are saying that for um, the U.S. Uh, Fracking technology is now there may be some shutdowns. So the cost would still be kept at a low level. So when you look at the twenty eighteen market, would you think that the natural gas price option would be more attractive? Well, in the past, when there was the program of um, sending natural gas from Western China to Eastern China, that was another consideration. For the mainland, they have to import energy. And to build an infrastructure in Hong Kong and on the mainland, there may only be a slight price difference. If Hong Kong is to buy raw materials directly, maybe it's not that expensive. Now we are talking about two options. Under the present energy supply environment, um, we rule out the option of uh, purchasing electricity from the mainland power grid. As for natural gas price, uh, part of it is affected by um, the oil price because for natural gas contracts, uh, there are certain conditions which are packed with um, the oil price. However, that's only one factor. Oil price is very volatile. From last year, up to now, there has been a drop of 50 percent. However, in the past, we have seen major uh, rebounds. So we cannot say that uh, with the low price now, the, the price will definitely continue to be uh, this low in the future. So we would have to look at the overall development of Hong Kong. We also need to uh, look at our environmental protection measures, etc. A lot of factors have to be taken into account. So you won't take the fluctuation of oil price into consideration. As you said just now, oil price will have an impact on natural gas price. So natural gas price has dropped a lot as well. So for the U.S., I think the pump price has dropped from $4 to $2. Yes, that's petroleum. That's not LNG. I understand. However, they are related. So for this factor, you think you really think um, it's not that important. In the coming few years, when co power companies need to sign up new natural gas contracts, so um, the low oil price would help them in the negotiation for a good price. So have you ruled out the possibility of purchasing electricity from the mainland power grid? We, um, after the consultation, we will uh, come to a decision. Ms. Elizabeth Kwok, I'm very concerned about uh, the uh, regulation of um, 
power supply, but um, you know there is a non-cooperative movement in the LACHCO, so there has been a lot of delays. You say that in the first half of the 25th of 2015, there are plans to consult the public on the um, scheme of control agreements. However, before the first of January 2016, you have to make a decision. So um, for the first half, I don't know which month you mean. Um, would there be too little time to do all this? If there's filibustering in the large code, then there will be major consequence and delays. So um, can you tell us more about your plan? Secretary, I would like to thank Ms. Scott for her questions. In the first half of this year, that is in the coming few months, we will be launching the relevant consultation, and it will take a few months. I understand the member's concern. At the latch call, it seems that um, time cannot really be controlled. But if members are concerned about people's livelihood, and environmental protection as well as economic development, I hope uh, they can do something. Up to now, we still have enough time. Chairman, well, the Secretary has good intention. However, what we witness at the Council is that the pan-democrats are not too concerned about people's livelihood. Well, because um, last week the uh, fisheries loan fund was not passed, so the government is forced to withdraw it today. So um, if you rely on the members' goodwill, I think it's quite impossible. Would you reserve enough time for doing it? Otherwise, in case of filibustering, there will be major consequences. Secretary, are you prepared for this? Of course, we are working very hard. We hope to launch the consultation documents as early as possible. However, this is about the future electricity market. This is a very complicated issue, so we have to be careful when we prepare the relevant documents. I understand the members' concern. Internally, we will be monitoring this very closely, but members have to understand this. If uh, timing runs out of control at the council, not only our plans will be affected, other plans will also be affected. You haven't answered me. What will the consequence be? When will you be coming back to the latch go? And when do we have to pass it? And if we do not pass it in time, what's the consequence? What's the consequence? Um, will the price go up or will there be any problem concerning the agreements? As for our agreements with the two power companies, it will expire in 2018. So if we want to have any changes after 2018, we will have to start our negotiation in 2016. So within this year, we would have enough time for consultation. We uh, well after getting. Uh, after gauging public opinions, we will start negotiating with the two power companies. Um, there is no legislative process. Mr. Yu Siwing, thank you, Chairman. Well, there are two cruise terminals in Hong Kong now, and there will be more cruise ships coming to Hong Kong in the future. Oh, some people hope that uh, there can be uh, land power supply at such a terminal so that um, air pollution in Hong Kong can be uh, mitigated. So if such facilities are to be provided at the cruise terminals, how much money do we have to spend on it? And will the cruise ships to be using land power supply and or onshore power supply. How many of the um, cruise ships will be using this? Now, when we look at it from the angle of air pollution, 
well, technically, we have to install onshore power supply facilities. Internally, we have put together a report on this. In the coming few months, we will be coming to the um, environment panel of LACHCO to uh, brief members on our report. At the same time, we uh, will be um, considering the possibility of um, providing onshore power supplies. Our members will be briefed on all this in the near future. So the government has looked at this issue. You know what cruise ships will be coming to Hong Kong. You know what kind of facilities they have on board, right? So you will collect the relevant information and let us know, right? You haven't come to a conclusion yet. Will you provide us with the conclusion, or do you want us to make the assessment? Under Secretary, yes, we will draw a conclusion. Well, one a part of the conclusion will be technical, and the other part is about uh, the cruise ships business. So we will be discussing with members on all these. Okay, now I'll ask my questions. Secretary, lately we've been um, discussing the uh, about the three landfills and the one incinerators, and because there was filibustering at the council, so that's why it took a very long time for these uh, projects to be passed. The government is uh, proposing certain projects which may be conducive for the long-term development of Hong Kong. We just talked about energy, and waste management is also very important. So for energy development and waste management, Secretary, can you conduct a more detailed study? And I hope that Hong Kong's long-term power supply and waste management will not be affected by the council's filibustering. Well, you have asked two questions. One is about electricity, and this is closely related to what we are talking about now. That is the uh, future development of electricity markets in Hong Kong. Um, we will be um, introducing a consultation documents so uh, we there will be major discussions in this area in the near future and when we talked about the uh, three landfills and one incinerator we have also said that uh, there would be a study on waste management infrastructure uh, we have uh, completed the relevant um consultancy tendering exercise. In the first half of this year, this will be conducted, and we will be looking at the long-term waste management um, policy in Hong Kong. So after we get the consultancy reports, we will brief members again. That will serve as a good foundation for our future discussion. And this will tie in with um, the future developments of our community. Yes, I agree with Ms. Scott. If you can advance all this work, it would be much better because a lot of things are happening every day and you cannot predict what will happen. So things should be done as early as possible. And if a consultation can be launched earlier, that would also be great. I think we have overrun a bit. I would like to thank the secretary, the under secretary, and the permanent secretary for attending today's meeting. And we'll end the discussion of this item here. AOB. Any other AOB members? No. The date of next meeting is the 16th of February, 10.45 a.m.